Okay, everybody, it's good to be with you as usual. Uh, I had an idea a few minutes ago that I was supposed to sit down at this computer and cut a new video called The Way of Truth. Um, so I have uh, put down what I was doing, which had nothing to do with this, and I have cut on the lights and cut on the recorder, and now we're going to um, now we're going to see what we get, and we're going to get what we get, but I have no idea what it is we're going to get because I sit down here as a blank slate. I have no, no predetermined ideas about what should be spoken of or how, how it should be spoken of or anything else, so we'll just find out. <sighs> the way of truth. Well, if we look at the title itself, the way of truth, let's see what that might tell us. Way, the way, as it's meant in this way, in, in, this, in the spiritual way, um, means a way that is in alignment with all other forces. So the Christians talk about the way, Taoists talk about the way, uh, Buddhists talk about the way. And we're really talking about sort of the same way. It's just ex maybe experienced differently. But the idea is to somehow to, in each case, it's to give up this. It gives up, it's to give up the, it's the, the surrendering of this unit's apparent free will. We're not, we can't even f surrender our free will because we don't have it to begin with. But there's a sense that we have it. It feels like we have it. You can, you can look at, at, at things and it'll look like there's cause and effect. And there is in the dream. There's cause and effect in the dream, but it's all a dream. This whole thing is a dream. See, this idea is that we often get this thing too small. We think that I am having a dream, but there's no I here on the deepest level. So there is dreaming. That's what there is. There's dreaming. That's all. So, and within the dream, anything can happen. And within the dream, there's cause and effect. If I pick up, pick this up and turn it over, I'll spill something. So that's cause and effect. But in truth, everything is its own cause. Everything, or everything is, everything is everything's cause. Everything is the cause of everything else. And everything else is the, the reaction to everything else. It's all one thing. It's all going on right now, right here. It's going on in the now, only as the now. So let's look and see what truth is. If the way is the movement, and we're, our title is the way of truth, and the way is movement toward truth, or with truth, I don't think we can go move toward truth because there's only truth. The truth is, that's it. There's only truth. This is it. What I mean when I say this, though, however, is I'm not meaning just manifestation. A lot of times we think that that's what I'm talking about, is, it, is that, well, there's this is it, and we think that I'm talking about just the manifested world, that it is the way it is, and, and that when we wake up, it's story-free and all of that, and that's a level of awakening. That's a that's legitimate level of awakening, and it's a very, uh, very helpful level of awakening. But we can get lost in that if we're not careful, because the, the truth is, is that I'm not having a dream. There's only dreaming which includes this. So I am part of that dreaming. Beyond the dream, there's no cause and effect. Beyond the dream, there's, well, actually, beyond the dream, there's nothing. We can't say it's nothing, nothing, but it's certainly no thing. We can't even talk about it. We can be it, but we can't talk about it. Just It's just beyond words. Because what you truly are is actually prior to language. Language is, language is the tool of the dream. It, language is all about duality. 
we don't need language until there's a Fred and there's a you, and then we're going to sit down and talk. Now we need language so that the two of us can communicate, but there's only one thing going on. So obviously, that's all in the dream. Language is the tool of the dream. This is the reason that talking about enlightenment rarely works, because you have to, in effect, leave it to talk about it because there's one thing going on and now suddenly I want to tell you something that that you don't know. I got to invent a Fred, I got to invent a you, and now I got to invent language. So I'm, I'm, I'm many steps away from the truth when the first word comes out of my mouth. That's the reason in awakening sessions it's all based on experiential stuff because you can't talk about it, but show and tell works incredibly well. The way of truth this manifestation is also part of truth only because there's nothing other than truth. Truth and oneness would be, well, that's not, they're not exactly synonymous. We could say that oneness occurs within truth. Oneness recurs as, occurs as a result of truth. Oneness is not other than truth, but it, but it does not um, but it does not equal the truth. The truth is beyond that. But let's just go to the let's go to the more relative level. Let's go to the idea that that truth is this manifestation. Just this, just for the sake of this video, we're going to say that truth is is this manifestation when it's viewed story free. Because that's one level of, of, of awakening. It's legitimate awakening. is to recognize, oh, there's just this, and I've been telling stories about myself and believing them, and that's the reason I've been suffering. And, so, and when we wake up, we realize there's no individual Fred, and so the, the Fred story no longer makes any sense. And it would never made any sense to begin with, but it seemed, seemed to us like it did. So this... It's how to align this with how to align this manifestation that this which always changes. It goes light, it goes dark, it goes big, it goes small. It's 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 divided up into zillions and zillions of these. Hot and cold, zero, one, off own, male, female, black, white. This manifestation is constantly changing. Truth never changes. So what we're talking about is how to align that which is constantly changing with that which does not change. How to align experience in manifestation with that which is actually beyond the dream, which is what you are. You're not other than this but you are not limited to being this. Well, the first thing we have to start with, if we're going to walk the way of truth, is we've got to look at the one thing that's most important to us that isn't true. You'll hear me talking about in posts and videos all the time about people who, um, that, 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 I, that I will wake up virtually everybody who talks to me unless they are unwilling to tell themselves the truth. And I don't mean that in a personal way. I'm not talking about that Bob or Sue is not, is not willing to tell Bob or Sue the truth. I'm talking about oneness is not yet ready to give up the ghost on that character, to see through that character, to give up the, to give up the play. Because there's nothing here but oneness. It's never anything personal here. But there's an experience of personal, isn't there? It feels like there's personal. So are we going to belong to a philosophy that just denies our present experience? I don't think so. Not for me. The, I want a philosophy that is going to help this experience be skillful. That's the most important thing. You know, the word that comes to mind of most people's minds is joyful. What I'm going to tell you is that skillful is more important than joyful. 
because enlightenment is not about being lying around in bliss all the time. That's you notice how unit centered that is. I the unit and lying around. I'm constantly in bliss. My body's just having a wonderful big orgasm here and all this kind of stuff. You notice that that's unit centered. Reality has nothing to do with 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 any supposed center. There's no center. So reality can't have anything to do with that. So the joy, the the the, the bliss that any unit might feel is entirely secondary. What's important is that we come to know ourselves and behave within the dream, within the confines of the dream, in a skillful manner. And what you'll find is that as you begin to wake up, there may be joyful stuff and, and, and bliss and everything at the beginning, and there's a there's a there's a there's a low level bliss always. And this is not, but this is not for the unit. This is for you, and this low level unit is not, or this low level bliss is noticing that there's only this great okayness. That's all there is, just this great okayness. Everything's okay. It's not necessarily we're excited about it, because excited about it, I'm not going to get, but only so excited about the dream. <laughs> it's a dream, and I know it, even if the unit doesn't. The, I'm not going to get but so worried about the dream because it doesn't affect me. Nothing in the dream actually affects me. Whether this unit is having a good story or a bad story, good stories are more fun for the unit, no question about it. But it's more or less neutral ground for me. Now, the thing is, is if that, if I am suffering, because the unit is suffering, then I have then I have gone back to misidentifying myself. I believe at that moment that I am the unit instead of that which inhabits that unit and every unit simultaneously. What's looking out of these eyes right now at you is the same very same thing that's looking out of your eyes at me. It's the same thing that's looking out of my dog's eyes and, and, and my cat's eyes and the bird's eyes outside all one and it's all it's all knowing because we can't find actually any separation between what's looking and what's being looked at because I'm not this we can find separation between this unit and the and, and the computer or this unit and there's what six feet or five feet between me and the backdrop we can find what a, a apparent separation there, but there's not any actual separation because I'm not this. I'm this. I'm this alive, aware space. See, this space is what's actually alive. We we just we overlook it. We pay no attention to it. We pay no attention to the only thing that counts. When I say this space, what I really mean is this spaciousness. I don't mean space as in time and space, which either a good physicist or I can sit down and debunk in fairly short order. But this spaciousness, that in which all occurs. Aligning ourselves with the truth really means giving up on this. I don't mean dying or anything like that. I mean giving up on fulfilling the wishes and whims of this and giving up on knowing what's best for this. I don't know what's best for this. I told you before that's my that's my chief problem with manifestation is that we're is that it's a, it's entirely dream oriented. No matter whatever else it is, it's dream oriented. Because I know what's right for this. <laughs> and it's not this. See, it's something other than what's happening. That means it's not true. When we have manifest when we have our a little our little yard, our little area of manifestation lined up with truth, 
what we notice is that things are very smooth and slick and easy. Recently, I had a, an idea about the, the business model of this teaching. It's a business here. You know, just that's the way of it. it that, and that's what, that's what keeps it going. And, um, and I had thought of there might be some way for me to expand my audience. There was a sense, I didn't know that I was supposed to have an expanded audience. I kept my mind completely open. What I noticed was there was a thought that said, you know, you maybe you should, maybe you should try. And I actually hired someone to help me with that. And um, he and I took a look at that. And we just started bumping our noses against stuff. And I told him, well, that's not the way. Let's try this other thing that we had discussed. And so we tried the other thing, and we noticed that we were just batting our noses against the thing. So he and I tried, we tried, or I tried, really, on my own, one more little thing. And my nose got beat up on that, too. So we then wrapped up. <laughs> that campaign and I'm so very happy because I get all the credit for willingness. I, I gave it my I gave it my best shot and now I find out I don't have to do a damn thing. And that's so much better. <laughs> I thought, you know, that, that this unit might be supposed to cooperate with the inevitable. Because this unit's got to cooperate with the inevitable sooner or later. What I want to do is do it sooner. Because when I cooperate with the inevitable, when I meaning the, the sense of Fred here, when I cooperate with what is, what, what's, 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 the, when I cooperate with the way, I just don't suffer so much. I don't want to fight the way that things are supposed to be. And do you know how things are supposed to be? They're supposed to be exactly like they are. And that's what we resist, isn't it? It's we just want, you know, if it just wasn't for this, I could wake up. If it just wasn't for that, oh man, I could really get it. And I can remember that too. I did it too. So I'm not just like pointing fingers. If I do, I gotta start here. I've done I've, I did everything possible I, I, that you can do wrong in a, to awaken. I, I did that. I really did. I was not skillful, I, and I carried a bloody nose there for 25 years. But guess what? Awakening did occur. Because there, at least if nothing else, there was incredible zeal on my part. I really, really wanted this thing. I wanted it for different reasons at different times. Sometimes I really wanted it to know the spiritual truth, and to, to, to and, and other times I wanted it because I thought it would be a, a nice egoic thing for the Fred unit to be awake. <laughs> and, you know, and at other times I wanted to save the world or whatever. All that's egoic. So I don't have any sense I'm supposed to save the world now. I, I do have a sense that I have to be open to the way that this teaching is going. And that, that when I say this teaching, I also mean with what I'm doing in my in my regular life, in my Betsy life, I have to be willing to go along with what's supposed to be. And the way that I've watched what's supposed to be is I watch what's happening. Because what's, what, what's happening is what's supposed to be is constantly unfolding in front of me. We call it what is. So how do I come into alignment with that? So what is, is not confined to relativity. It's not confined to manifestation. But it is certainly the core of the human experience, is it not? So it's important. We don't want to brush it aside. We don't want to you know, try to diss this relative experience. And there, there are certainly teachings, lots of teachings that do. They just want us to sort of ignore this part for something that comes later. And, and it's, for, it's in order to ignore this part for the enlightenment that's going to come later, for the going to heaven that's going to come later, for the, for, the, for, the, for the 
17 virgins that are going to come later for whatever it is. The idea is that it's not about later. It's about right now. The way that I align myself with truth, the real way of truth, is seeing through the story of Fred. Is seeing is because there's there's a there's a story of Fred. It continues to this day. People talk about this unit. That's the story of Fred. They talk about the the, the teaching. That's the, that's still the st story of Fred. This teaching is occurring within the dream. On the lar on the largest on the on the deepest scale, this te teaching is absolutely meaningless. I don't even know why I do it. I just noticed that I do. I don't know why I do anything. I don't know why I sat down to do this video, except for the sense that, okay, that's the way of it. I was following the way. as the perfect example. I was following the way when I, quote, agreed to sit down and try to cut a video when I had absolutely nothing in mind other than a title. But it felt like the way of it. You, as you, the way that you learn to to work as the way because we we it'll always be interpreted as that that this unit is or that that this apparent will and all of that that it's operating um within the way that i'm in alignment with the way but the fact is is that in my true nature as my true nature I am, I am the way. There's nothing but me. There's just one thing going on and I'm it. And you can say the same. So, I cannot align myself with truth while I'm hanging on to the faults. People, when I would get into awakening sessions, it can be tough for people to to give up to give up on their character. It doesn't mean the character is going to disappear. The character is not there by your will. It's there by the will. It's not there by because of, of your story or your wishes. It's just the way things are. So the people that have the sense that they're going to disappear, they got to understand you're not here to begin with. How are you going to disappear? People ask me, you know, so uh, so do you believe in reincarnation? I said, well, Fred would have to, re to incarnate the first time before he can reincarnate a second or third. There's no Fred. I'm not saying there's not a package that doesn't move. There is and within the dream. Within the dream. All of this, everything I talk about, if this entire teaching is, is actually, it's about seeing through the dream. That's how we align ourselves with truth. As we see through the dream, the first thing I've got to see is that there's no Fred. And I can do that by living in inquiry. So when you're over there and you're saying, I'm not quite real sure what he's telling me, ask who asked that question. Go back and see. Can you find the one who said, I'm not sure I understand? Who is it that doesn't understand? Can you actually locate them? No. What do you hit? Nothing. Nothing. I'm going to get it soon. Who is thinking, who's, who's buying into that story? Can you find them? No. I do this every day with people. We go in and we look in great detail at, at, into the into what they're not. And once we see very clearly what we're not, then what we are begins to take shape much more readily.
In other words, we can see it. It's not that it's not already there. It just means we can consciously see it. There's, you are consciousness. You're not, you're not lined up with consciousness. You're in the, you are consciousness. Everything is consciousness. You actually are even beyond that. But we're just going to, consciousness is arising too. But we're, let's just, just say that you are consciousness, which is true on a, on a level. It's absolutely true. So your consciousness, but there's two states to consciousness. There's awake consciousness and there's, and there is unconscious awakeness. There's conscious awakeness and unconscious awakeness. Aligning ourselves with true is com truth is coming to conscious awakeness in our lives, not just when we're sitting in the living room reading books on non-duality, not just when we're over there on the cushion meditating. Uh-uh. All the time. Constantly questioning, trying to find out who is this, because the, the because the thing is, is that it it looks like for all the world like it's going to storm here this afternoon, and I can like want that or not want that, like that or not like that, it's going to storm either way. If I align myself with the fact that it's a nice wet day, great, I'll be comfortable. If I decide that. I shouldn't, it shouldn't be like that. I'm resistant. Here's, a, here's, a, here's something for you to check right now. When you, if you relax right here with me right now, I do this all the time with people. So just relax with me for just a couple of minutes. Just notice that, that it's really peaceful. I mean, it's, we don't have to do anything to become peaceful. We just have to notice that we are peace already. There's always peace, quote, here. So if we just let resistance go, which is, in the way of my books, would be the box, the beliefs, opinions, and positions. If we just let all of that go, can you find a problem here? Can you? Can you find something that's wrong? Can you find something that's out of place? Can you find something that's missing? No. You can't. Because when you drop all of that, you're dropping the character. And in the absence of the character, there's just this and it's just fine. I don't even know what it is, but I notice it's fine. In the absence of a problem, in the absence of the character, we cannot find a problem. And in the absence of a problem, look, you can't find a character either. In the absence of disagreement with what is, there's only what is. This is alignment with truth even on this relative level. This is alignment with truth, is recognizing this is it. This is the way things are and there's no alternative. There's, there is no, it shouldn't be raining. That's what isn't. It's raining. There is no, they should, this person shouldn't be doing that. They should be doing that. We don't understand why, but we know that it's a vital part of the big picture. Because, but the unit will never understand why it is because the unit wants that wants this entire universe to be doing what it wants it to do. That's what it thinks it should do, be doing, and it thinks everybody should be doing what it thinks they should be doing, and it's a lunatic. <laughs> So, do you want to turn your life over to a lunatic? Because if you do, there's just going to be a tremendous amount of suffering. So, what I'm suggesting is don't turn your life over to a, a, a lunatic. Turn your life over, period. This doesn't mean surrender to what is. Surrender to these conditions. Surrender to this environment. Does not make me powerless. It does not make to where I cannot take skillful action. 
The key here is to be skillful. I am naturally skillful when I'm awake to the truth. And I am naturally unskillful within the dream when I'm not awake to the truth of, of me. Because this, this arising, this very arising, this is exactly, and this arising is the way that I am presenting myself to myself at this exact moment. If I know that I'm awake. If I don't know that, I'm not. I may be clear on different levels, but that fundamentally, that bottom line there, there's, there's awakeness. Do I know this is me or not? Do I know there's one thing going on or not? Am I still identifying with this? It's identifying. It doesn't mean you have to. It just means that it's habit. It's just habit. The way of truth for Fred is to discover the absence of Fred. And be okay with that. I'm fine with that. I mean, I've been much better without Fred than I was with him. And I noticed that Fred's story has improved markedly. Now, that doesn't mean it has to. doesn't mean it always will. But it means that it has overall. Certainly not everything goes the unit's way. But, but, but I just noticed that overall, life has gotten much, much better here since awakening took place. And the more awake I, consciousness, am through this unit, the smoother things simply are going to go. Because there's less and less Fredness here. And more and more brightness. It's more Fred, less Fred, more me. Works exactly the same way for you. In order to surrender to the truth, you just got to tell yourself. The one who wants to wake up is never going to wake up. Because it's we all want to wake up our units. We all want to wake up our characters. And none of us ever do. What we do is we see through them. The way that we align ourselves with truth is to see through all the lies. That's the reason it's called the book of undoing and the book of unknowing. We don't have to learn anything, to, to do anything new. We don't have to learn anything new. We have to undo what we've been doing and undo what we've been knowing in order for truth to just naturally arise. I mean, it's, it's, it's already arisen. It's already here. We just have to pull the, the thoughts off of it. That's all. You have to learn to believe in yourself instead of the thoughts that run through you. These thoughts arise. Nothing you can do about it. Thoughts arise. You don't have to believe them. You don't have to grab them. You don't have to make them yours. You can let them go. Including the thought, well, I like that. I'm going to start it tomorrow. Let that one go. Start now. That's the only time you can wake up is now. Everybody's going to wake up later. I understand that. I know that damn few do. If you want to wake up right here, right now, I have people that do it with me every day. So, get clear now. Be willing to notice that there's just one thing happening here. And that it's not, this one thing is not about making this pleased or happy or strong or or, or, you know, rich or sexy or any of that kind of stuff, it's not about this at all. And you don't, and you shouldn't care because you're not this. You're oneness. We can't say you're not this you're, because it's part of you. But you're not limited to this. That we can say. Well, I guess I cut a video. Thanks a lot. I'll see you later. Bye.